Recent studies reveal Denisovan DNA in ancient genomes from Brazil, Uruguay, and Panama. Polynesian seafarers reached South America tens of thousands of years ago, and the evidence is now strong that they were carrying significant Denisovan DNA. These Polynesian seafarers didn't just reach the shores of South America, they sexually intergressed with ancient indigenous populations, leaving genetic fingerprints in the bodies of Brazilians, Panamanians, and Uruguayans. Una nota antes que empezamos, hablamos mucho de español en este video y el falo mucho de portugués. Bienvenido. Rapa Nui. A just released study suggests that much of that integration happened on Easter Island. The new study shows that. Rapa Nui may have served as a genetic gateway facilitating sexual integrations between ancient South American tribes and Polynesian seafarers. Rapa Nui may have doubled as prehistory's love island where tribal hookups and seafaring flings helped shuttle Denisovan DNA across the Pacific. Swedish husband and wife team uncover ritual, romance, and resilience on Rapa Nui. Helene and Paul Leyland have built a quiet legacy in South Pacific archaeology. Professors at Uppsala University, they're more than academics. They're a husband and wife team with decades of fieldwork behind them, tracing ancestral patterns across Polynesia. Their latest return to Rapa Nui isn't just another dig. It's a re-examination of the island's ecological story, armed with sharper tools and a fresh perspective. What they've uncovered may shift how we understand Rapa Nui's past and challenge the long-standing Jared Diamond civilization collapse narrative that shaped the island's legacy for decades. Jared Diamond argued that the Rapa Nui people caused their own societal collapse through ecocide, deforesting the island, exhausting the resources, and triggering starvation, warfare, and population decline. Paper from ritual spaces to monumental expressions, rethinking East Polynesian ritual practices, abstract, genetic research reveals evidence of pre-European South American interaction in East Polynesia, particularly on Rapa Nui. Intro, what we challenge is the static west to east colonization and dispersal suggested for East Polynesia, and the idea that Rapa Nui was only colonized once, then developed in isolation. Continuing, genetic research reveals evidence of pre-European South American interaction in East Polynesia, particularly on Rapa Nui. IFL Science, Easter Island was never as isolated as we thought, July 2025. Genetic evidence showing that the people of Eastern Island had contact with mainland South America. Continuing, Professor Paul Whelan, quote, Some people argue that Rapa Nui people went to South America and back. And if they could do that, then they were very skilled sailors and could go the other way as well, end quote. Ancient Migration Routes to South America this recent Rapa Nui study appears to corroborate findings from a 2022 genomic analysis which identified evidence of 
integration from ancient Polynesian populations into indigenous South American groups. A paper was published in 2022. It included authors Andre Compello Santos of Florida Atlantic University and Jonathan Lindo of Emory University. The paper was titled Genomic Evidence for Ancient Human Migration Routes Along South America's Atlantic Coast. Paper. Here we present ancient human genomes from the archaeologically rich Northeast Brazil and compare them to ancient and present day genomic data. Continuing, we find a distinct relationship between ancient genomes from Northeast Brazil, Lagoa Santa, Uruguay, and Panama, representing evidence for ancient migration routes along South America's Atlantic coast. Abstract, to further add to the existing complexity, we also detect greater Denisovan than Neanderthal ancestry in ancient Uruguay and Panama individuals. Eureka Alert 2022. Findings show a distinct relationship among ancient genomes from Northeast Brazil, Lagoa Santa, Uruguay, and Panama. This new model reveals that the settlement of the Atlantic coast occurred only after the peopling of most of the Pacific coast and the Andes. Continuing, the fact that the Denisovan lineage persisted and its genetic signal made it into an ancient individual from Uruguay that is only 1,500 years old suggests that it was a large admixture event between a population of humans and Denisovans. Quote, it's phenomenal that Denisovan ancestry made it all the way to South America, end quote, says Jonathan Lindo, PhD, at Emory University. Quote, the admixture must have occurred a long time before, perhaps 40,000 years ago, end quote. The authors of the study concluded that two Brazilian tribes in particular, the Sarui and the Caretiana, had a quote-unquote strong signal of Australasian ancestry. And that the two tribes descended from the mysterious Ipec Guerra. The authors conjure the Ipec Guerra, not as a people, but as a ghost wave a spectral migration etched in the genome, vanishing without a trace, yet leaving behind a whisper of Australian fire in the veins of the Amazon. And as Professor Lindo's research suggests, the genetic traces of Denisovan ancestry in South America may point to ancient contact roots stretching back 40,000 years, perhaps to the ancestors of the Ipec Cuera. Rapa Nui, remote and symbolically charged, could have served as a way station in a much older story of migration and admixture. The Mummy of Santa Lagoa. Campello Santos and Lindo deliver one last shock. The Lagoa Santa Mummy, Brazil's Paleo-American icon, carries the Australasian genetic marker, a Sahil echo buried in the heart of the Amazon, proof that the Ipecoera signal reached deep into South America. Sahil refers to the ancient supercontinent that once connected Australia, New Guinea, and Tasmania, where Denisovan to Homo sapiens admixture likely occurred between 40,000 and 20,000 years ago. Intro from their paper, 
To date, only one individual, Sumaduro 5, unearthed in Lagoa Santa archaeological area in southeast Brazil, has been found to harbor the Australasian signal. The Danish explorer who rewrote Brazil's past. When Danish explorer Peter W. Lund unearthed the famous Santa Lagoa mummy in 1831, he was taken aback by its unusual facial structure and form. Alaska Native News, August 2025. DNA of the world's oldest natural mummy unlocks secrets of America's Ice Age tribes. The Lagoa Santa remains were retrieved by Danish explorer Peter Lund in the 19th century. Continuing, his work led to the Paleo-American hypothesis based on cranial morphology that theorized the famous group of skeletons could not be Native Americans. Cranial Measurements Britannica Craniometry studies of prehistoric skull and face bones have enabled anthropologists to trace the gradual changes that occurred in the size and shape of the human head as it enlarged to accommodate increased brain volume. Craniometry is related to physiognomy, phrenology, and racial typology. These fields have a controversial history, and many anthropologists of the past were accused of using cranial measurements to support racist theories. The Lagoa Santa mummy exhibited primitive cranial features, including a prognathic mid-facial region, a broad nasal aperture, and a smaller, more sloped cranial cavity. These traits were used by early anthropologists to support the controversial Paleo-American hypothesis. Alaska Native News, Professor Eski Villesvel of the University of Copenhagen led the study. He said, Lagoa Santa was, quote, very controversial because the fossils were identified as so-called Paleo-Americans based on craniometry, end quote. Native American advocacy groups pushed back forcefully against the scientific interpretations of the Lagoa Santa mummy accusing researchers of reinforcing racist stereotypes. The early findings of Peter Lund, in particular, drew sharp criticism for their alignment with what some consider outdated racial typologies. But the fact remains, even at 10,400 years ago, the Lagoa Santa mummy exhibited profoundly archaic features This has led some researchers to interpret the morphology as a possible echo of heavy Denisovan admixture. Mandibular morphology. Fortunately, we now have two excellent Denisovan specimens to compare with Santa Lagoa. The Pengu specimen from Taiwan exhibits a robust jaw with thick bone structure while the Shi He mandible from Tibet shows a similarly massive mandibular corpus. Both Denisovan specimens reflect archaic hominid morphology, and their powerful lower facial architecture are consistent with the traits observed in the Lagoa Santa mummy. Professor Murray Cox, computational biologist at Massey University in New Zealand, has emerged as one of the most provocative voices in human evolutionary genetics. His work explores deep ancestral signals in Oceanian populations, and he's one of the few researchers to publicly speculate about a fourth archaic subspecies, a ghost lineage that may have contributed 
to the genetic makeup of indigenous people across the Pacific and South America. Science. Our mysterious cousins, the Denisovans, may have made it with modern humans as recently as 15,000 years ago, March 2019. Quote, we used to think of Denisovans as a single group, end quote, notes Cox, who suggests, as an aside, that the D2 group might even need a new name. Cox has assigned D0, D1, D2, and D3 as different classifications of Denisovan subspecies. Professor Cox's hypothesis of a fourth Denisovan branch aligns closely with the findings of Campello Santos and Lindo, reinforcing the emerging view of Denisovan diversity across Asia, Melanesia, and the Pacific. Campello Santos, quote, we find a component of genetic ancestry in the ancient data set that is closely related to that of present-day oceanic populations, but does not correspond to the previously reported Australasian signal, end quote. The Lagoa Santa profile may not be Denisovan in the strict sense, but it could echo a forgotten branch of the Denisovan diaspora. Perhaps even the elusive fourth subspecies Professor Murray Cox hinted at, an ancient lineage that left its mark in bone but not in name, which makes it even more mysterious. Deep in the genomes of Brazil's forest tribes may lie the echo of a vanished hominid, neither Denisovan nor Neanderthal, but something older, stranger, and still unnamed. Thank you for watching.